Okay, so I got some Jasper here. I'm going to try making a, uh, probably a smaller knife blade out of this because there's uh, some junk I got to knock away. Let me just see how it goes. Keep the nice flakes for uh, for some points. That's some nice stuff. Look at that. All right. So I'm gonna kinda do this slowly. I do see there's like defects in, in this a little bit. So I'm gonna try to slowly make a uh, decent knife blade here. It's good for a spear point. like that sound. I'll keep those. Just try to knock knock away that junk like that. See that? Cleaned up. And some dry stuff in here. That'll still work, though. Knock away the corner. Like that, so I could zigzag it. Um, I gotta be careful, this is a little more brittle than I thought it was. Wasn't expecting it to take off that much. Okay. So I'm going to hit in here. Right in there. And try to get rid of some of that mass. Woo. There we go. Ugh. Okay. And then I could zigzag that. You can see where the flake just ran. And I'm just going to lightly zigzag that. I'm not going to try to run a massive flake. Just little ones like that. Keep those. Most of that cleaned up now. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of slowly do this to try and come up with, I wanna get rid of the dry stuff and I wanna keep the middle stuff but get rid of some of the brittle stuff on the edge. Some crystals in there. I'm gonna take care of the base early which is something I don't usually do. I usually wait until the end. Let's get rid of some of it. All right. So now how to thin this down. Dry stuff doesn't want to flake, but it will. 
See the dry patch right there? The stuff in here is going to hang up a little bit, but that doesn't mean you can't work it. You just need to come in at an angle and get rid of it. Which is what I'm trying to do here. Um, I know this is kind of like really close. But uh, you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little better this way, I think. Always trying new camera angles. We don't know. Don't know. Won't know until I look at it on the screen. All right. I'm going to try to... Well, first I'm going to take a flake here, I think. Like that. Keep the flakes. And then I'm going to come in down here. Doesn't want to run. All right. Let's try a risky come in from the base up here. Doesn't want to go. Wow. There we go. Got some of it. All right. Let's keep thinning it as best I can here. I think this is going to be the tip. I'm not sure yet. I won't be sure until I finish up shaping. All right. Um, I am not used to this material, so I'm kind of hitting a little bit too hard. I got to be careful. I do want to get a, a nice hunting knife out of this. Put it up for sale. All right. So I think what I'm going to do, this is going to be the tip. Cut off that, make it a kind of narrow blade. <clears throat> we'll see. This uh, dry stuff has me nervous in here. Just because when there, whenever there's like a uh, variation in the stone I get a little bit nervous just because you have to hit differently for the high quality stuff the cooked stuff is a lot more brittle than the dry stuff so depending on where you are on the workpiece you have to hit differently I think I'm probably going to blow this ear off. We'll see. Just trying to thin it. Get rid of some of that junk. Um, with the hunting knives, I like to keep them as wide as possible so that throughout the years, if you need to resharpen it, you can. 
I don't know that anybody's uh, using these enough to need to resharpen it. You want it to be um, thin enough to cut, cut well, but not super thin that it'll break the second it hits bone or a tough tendon. hit here try to remove some of this hangs right up at that stuff all right All right, getting the blade shape now. Um, I don't think I want that piece too thin. Uh, maybe I will, though. Just looks. Can you see that? All right, not gonna make it ultra thin. That is a pretty nice blade as is. All right, I'm going to try to take one flake right up here. Dangerous to do. I'm going to support it like that. Put the tip against my pinky. <sighs> nice. So, I never expect that to go according to plan. I get excited. I go, yeah. So the other half of that channel flake fell off. You could really see the dry material in there is not, it's more brittle. Easier to uh, snap. All right. So, take one more here, one more here. Yeah, so it's hanging up in there. See that? All right. When I make these knives, um, they're not in any particular style of blade but I make them how I like to use them and um, I just assume that would work well for other people using them as well. So I'm going to try to come in here and get rid of some of that. See that little platform? I'm going to aim it that way. Chalky. Chalky, chalky. Okay. So that's going to be the hafting area. Um, I'm not awfully concerned about that. All 
Alright. I don't think I'm going to try to run another flake there. Not with a direct percussion, at least. All right. Indirect. Let's see. Can I even do this in this chair? Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Well, yeah. So I'm just gonna try to sharpen up the edges a little bit, shape it a little bit, taking these little flakes off. This uh, if this one survives, I'll uh, I'll put it on a handle. Put it up for sale tomorrow. Let's see. Is there any way I could film this a little bit better? Just zoom in a little bit better. Just my light. Let's see. Okay. Sometimes if you get some brittle material, it's best to leave that at the tip. You could take care of it towards the end with indirect like this there is a little imperfection in here so i'm gonna get rid of that sometimes those little lines in the rock really mess with you see that it's okay though See how it's only running to the dry area and then it stops? You got to put, put a lot of force into that. Um, this is definitely thin enough for a knife. Now you wouldn't really know that unless you use them yourself. Um, Yes, the knives cut better, but they also break really easy. Some pretty stuff in this rock. Wow. Right here is a problem. It's not even going. Wow.
dug in. There we go. And then I have a bump right there that I need to get rid of. It's always risky at the end to do this. All right, so the haft will fit right on here. And I think I'm just gonna do a little side notch, little tiny, like that. Yeah. That seems like that will work best. Brittle. Definitely brittle. So I'm going to try hitting right there to get rid of this little ridge. That is not working. doesn't want to get rid of that bump. There we go. So I rusted it on the the hinge and hit and got rid of it. All right. I think I'm going to do the rest of this with pressure. Looks pretty good. This area here. Trying to get rid of the stuff that isn't sharp. All right. Nice. The side looks good. Okay, switch to pressure flaking, if I can find my flaker. It's in here somewhere. Is that it? No, that's a flaker. Right. Somebody recently said uh, they would break their wrists if they did it like how I did. Um, so I'm actually going to use my knees for this one because... I am starting to get hurt from those camera angles.
Yep. Be real careful with the tip. You mess it up like I just did. Let me uh, get that on camera. That would be nice. Just making sure it's super sharp. Get, getting these edges and all. Razor, razor sharp. That's all you need for a good cutting edge. All right. Let's sturdy up the base a little bit. problem with my uh my nerve in my arm that runs down uh in here all the way from my neck down into these two fingers has really been acting up on me and uh i did go to physical therapy for it he said it'll go away eventually probably not as long as i'm doing this though The littlest splinters always hurt the most, in my experience. I'm trying to pressure flake through this brittle stuff, and it's just not... <sighs> Alright, good enough for hafting. There was some coyotes out here before making some pretty music. It's nice to get a reminder that I'm not, not really in Manhattan anymore. Or Long Island. I'm popping off some pretty decent flakes uh, when I'm sharpening. I just want to make sure that it will cut really well. Cutting edge you want to be usually a little serrated. And the serrations will go away as you use it. It doesn't mean it's any less effective when those serrations go away but uh what i've seen is most people most people use their 
stone hunting knives maybe once or twice and they don't ever need to resharpen it or they wind up taking up napping and they make their own and whenever they go out hunting they have a new knife there is a spot here that's uh irritating me I'm going to tap that with indirect see it right there I'm going to use the uh the little billet to tap it That works. See? And then just clean it up. Even it out. And it is good to go. Any of the uh, the edges that are kind of um, squared off, I like to round a little bit, just for looks. All right. Nice big thinning flake right up the center. Sharp as heck, robust in here, but that's okay. It's gonna haft right here, and then all the strength is there, so it won't snap here. If you're using this point, you see where that dips off? If you haft it above that point, and then you're putting the pressure, it will not snap. It most likely will not snap there. But there you go. Nice uh, tough jasper knife. If I ground down here and smacked, I could probably run a thinning flake here, but I don't want that to be thin there. And I've, uh, you know, trained myself over the years to try to thin everything down. Sometimes I have to stop myself. Okay, see that edge? On that side. This will be a nice knife. All right, that's it for me, guys. Hope you liked it. See you guys soon. Have a good night.